Hey, good morning, everybody. Lawrence Michael, Operations Manager for Air Quality Remediation. As always, uh, making another first day mold remediation video. Uh, we are at a church in Middletown. Long story short, uh, this church had a uh, flood um, outside this front door. There's a drain uh, for a normal exterior rain uh, drain that got clogged up, which is pretty common. Uh, it got clogged up, allowed water to come into the basement area, which was a, a finished basement. Um, they called the insurance company. Insurance company sent out um, another company. I won't name names. I won't put anybody out there. But they had a, a company come out. Uh, they didn't do the drying correctly. They didn't do it within uh, the standard time frame that you need to do a water restoration in. So because of that, it turned into a mold remediation project. Um, they had this same company come out and do the remediation again through the insurance company. That was the uh, insurance company's preferred vendor for remediation and restoration service. Again, I won't name names, but they didn't do that right either. So now we're months down the line. Um, now there's mold growth all over the place. Um, so we got contracted to come in and do the remediation correctly and completely the way it should have been done months ago, but that wasn't the case. So now we're, um, we're dealing with it as we can. I, I just wish that um, companies would do everything right the way they're supposed to, but we can only hope. So uh, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown of what we have going on. Again, it's only day one. So as always, our typical standard operating procedure We'll make a video on day one to show you guys what we have going on, and then I'll make another video at the end to show you everything that was done. So, here at the door, we have our containment door built, as always, to uh, isolate the affected area from the unaffected area. In this case, it's the basement of the church compared to the rest of the church upstairs. So we build a containment here, and we build another containment door that's going upstairs to the second floor, and I'll show you that when we make it to the other side of the building. After we build our containment, we establish negative air pressure. As always, we do that with HEPA air scrubbers. So we have one HEPA air scrubber here that's ducted out the window. We also have three other HEPA air scrubbers down here. So that's four total air scrubbers for a total of 4,000 CFMs, which are cubic feet per minute. So that means we're doing 4,000 cubic feet of air per minute that is getting sucked out of this basement area filtered and then pushed outside to create that negative air pressure in this basement area to prevent any spores, contaminants, anything else from going upstairs into the rest of the church. So as we walk through, I'll show you the other air scrubbers, but we can see here, the guys started pulling the baseboards off first and we can see extensive mold growth behind, behind every baseboard is extensive mold growth. So this other company saying that the mold remediation was done or that the water restoration was done completely and correctly is nonsense. Uh, we can see here on these baseboards and then on the exterior foundation walls how bad this mold growth is and it only gets worse as we go along so we can see here more mold growth where the baseboards were. Uh, it's all the way down this this wall here. Um, it's kind of hard to see on video but it is all the way down here we can see it more easily on the backs of this baseboard and the drywall, as well as here on the backs of the baseboards and the drywall. And it gets real bad here. Again, the backs of the baseboards and the drywall. It's, it's all the way through. Um, some areas are worse than others, but it's definitely all the way throughout. Again, backs of the baseboards, bottom of the drywall. Again here, backs of the baseboards, bottom of the drywall. Again here, backs of the baseboards, back of the or bottom of the drywall. Again, more baseboards here. And then as we go up these basement steps, we can see we built our other containment door so that isolates the basement area from the rest of the church just like we always do uh, 
the first thing you do in any remediation or restoration job is always build a containment, establish negative air pressure. Both of those things eliminate cross-contamination into unaffected areas. That's a staple. It has to be done. Any other remediation or restoration company out there, if you're not building a containment and you're not setting up negative air pressure before you do any remediation or restoration project, you're wrong. We can see here on the bottoms of the drywall, on the backs of the baseboards. We can see some effervescence on some concrete foundation walls. We will take care of that as well, but that's not really the reason we're here. But as always, doing a little extra the AQR way. I've kind of started doing that in all the videos because it seems like every video on every job that we do, we do a little bit extra. We can see here on the drywall again, so it's pretty much more of the same. Um, it's all the way throughout. Again, here's another HEPA air scrubber ducted out the window. Again, you know, if, if companies had just done things correctly the first time, you know, the cost wouldn't be as extensive. The amount of time that they were out of the church wouldn't be nearly as extensive. You know, all these things are causal effect. Again, here in this room, back of the baseboards, bottom of the drywall. Pretty substantial in this room. Again, over here, back of the baseboards, bottom of the drywall. And here we see another negative air machine. It's ducted out the window. So I think that's number three that you guys have seen. So there must be a couple more rooms that I haven't taken you guys in yet. Uh, it looks like this is the last room here. Again, this is another negative air machine here that's ducted out the window. So that would be the fourth negative air machine that you guys are seeing. So this negative air machine does 1500 CFMs. Uh, the two medium ones you saw were 1,000 CFMs, and then the small blue one you saw were 500 CFMs. So 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 4,000 CFMs for this square footage, for this cubic footage. And there is an equation, I've, I've kind of talked about it a little bit before, the equation that you need to do to figure out how many CFMs you need to uh, maintain that two to three air changes per hour inside any uh, contaminated area. Uh, maybe if I make another video in the future, I'll kind of go over that equation. I know you guys uh, probably passed math class and you all want to do it all over again, but for anybody who's interested in the way we actually do things, it might be pretty cool for you to see. Last thing I want to show you is this mold growth here on this drywall. So, we are finally at the end. We're going to be cleaning this air conditioning unit and all the ductwork that goes through the church. So, I just wanted to show you guys this air conditioning unit because we will be cleaning that as well. Because it is likely, um, because there's mold spores inside this area and the air conditioning unit is also inside this area, it's likely that the air conditioning unit and the ductwork are contaminated as well. So, as always, we do everything 100% from start to finish. There's no corners cut. Um, we have to assume that the ductwork in the air conditioning unit is contaminated, so we'll clean it uh, just per NADCA standard, just like always. Um, but as always, if anybody has any questions, uh, definitely put them down in the comments. If anybody wants to see any specific, um, you know, different things about indoor air quality, um, you wanna see, I don't know, the way uh, equipment is cleaned or the way equipment works or the type of antimicrobial solution we use and how we dilute it, um, you know, how to determine uh, air changes per hour or how to determine whether uh, a negative air machine or air scrubber is working efficiently the way it's supposed to, you know, definitely leave it in the comments. Let me know. We can certainly make a video explaining all of that stuff. I think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of people out there who would also think it's interesting and it's, it's good information to have not only for people in the industry, but for homeowners and commercial customers alike, property management companies, so that when you have an issue like this, you're educated, you've already educated yourself 
and companies can't take advantage of you. If, if you have this issue and a company comes in and they're not doing X, Y, Z that you've already researched, then they're, find, it, find another company. Find a company that'll do things right, do things correctly and completely so that you don't have to do it again. It'll, it eliminates your liability by educating yourself. So as always, you know, if, if anybody has any questions, wants to hear about any of the indoor air quality things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, definitely let us know. Uh, check us out on any of our other social media platforms. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you on the next video.